So I've had a lot of requests to do a tutorial on root building. So here it is. It's going to be a sort of series, and this first episode is going to be about the basics and about track lane. So to start off, you root, you click the build. Go into root, and you head over to click new root. On here, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it tutorial. If my keyboard wants to work. And you have to select, basically if you select this, it will select base assets for your root. I'm going to click South Wales Coastal because it has decent assets. And once it's created, you'll see it on this big list of roots. Tutorial, click on it and then click edit. So once you hop in, you'll see something like this, it's an empty world. To move around, you simply use the arrow keys, and it's shift and arrow keys if you want to move faster. And then to look around, you hold right click and move your mouse. And you can see there's a menu bar here. And I won't tell you much about the first section, which is the objects, because I'll be in another video and I'll talk about how to, you know, add scenery. If you want to add different assets, you click this little cube and you can select from the drop down menu what kind of assets you want. I don't know, let's say I want Brighton, Brighton Man, I'll check it and it's added a whole bunch of stuff. But I'm not going to be using that as a tutorial. If you head on over to your linear objects tools, you've got track, road, fences, walls, and fences. Platforms, bridges, water, etc. This is where the track will be. So you click the track and you can see a drop down of track. So you can select which track you want. I'm going to use concrete clean. But down here you can select how many tracks you want. So let's say you can say, I oh, know I want two tracks and it's two. You can have ten tracks if you want. And there you go, you can have ten. And we've got the follow tool, which is basically if if you have that on and you place track, your camera will follow the track. I don't really have it on because I don't really find it that that useful, but I only have it on when doing long sections of track. Next we've got the gradient tool. Where if you need enter value, it will basically make your track go up or down a hill. But I prefer a different method to going up and down, and I'll show you that later. Next, you've got snap to the terrain. So if you've got, so if you've got a hill, which I'll show you to do that later. But if you've got under, let's say a hill up here, and you want your track to go up, up the hill, the track will snap to the terrain. Next, you've got snap to track. I'll show you that later. And you've also got manual points or manual junction, I should say. So you want to place the track. So all you do is select the track. And up here, you can see. So you have to select a template down here if it's not already selected. And down here, you can see. You can adjust the speed limit. So the top value is the, like the primary speed limit for passing the trains. And then the secondary speed limit for freight trains. And you can select. So you can change that by setting a value. So let's say I don't want them to go 100 miles an hour. You can set that. And you can select what kind of line it is main line, yard, passenger, or freight, and this will adjust the maximum or the minimum radius it can go so you can turn. So, main line will not turn much at all. Whereas, if I was to compare that with yard, which would be able to turn the most, you can see that's a lot more sharper than if I was to select the main line. And then, next down here, you can see. If you want overhead rails, third rail, fourth rail. Now, if I select overhead wires, this will not put overhead wires. This will just mean that overhead trains can run on it. This is just me editing the video, and I realised that didn't really make much sense. What I meant by this is the that the overhead wires for the actual scenery will not be there, but you can actually run overhead wires and overhead trains on that line and I'll explain later 
uh, in another episode on how to actually get the physical overhead wire to show on the track. And next you can adjust the sound, I wouldn't really play with that, but you can if you want. So this is for example, I don't know if you're going over, so let's say there's going to be a bridge here, I can select, oops sorry, I can select iron bridge and it will play the sound of, and a train goes over it, the sound of an iron bridge. The last one is super elevation, so if you want, you know, a track to tilt around corners, like shown here, you can select that, but I usually do that after after I place the track. So you've selected all the settings you want. What you can do is you can place it, if you left click, the, the track will place, and you can still look around and you can move around using your using your arrow keys as well as shift to go faster and then right click and hold to just look around so you've got the track you can simply place it by clicking and it will follow your mouse if you want like a straight line I find it easier to uncheck snap to track and once it goes yellow you're going in a straight line Something I forgot to mention is if you click and hold, you can rotate the track to whichever direction you want. And a little handy hint is down here at the bottom, you can select an angle, so let's say I want it only to be 90 degrees, and click this box, which will only change 90 degrees. But I don't find that useful on placing tra tracks. If you untick that, you can select your track. Once your track's placed, you can click on it, move it around. And down here you can see there's a rotate. So if you click that, I can then rotate it. If you want to carry on your track, if you want to carry on from the track, you simply get the little arrow and it should lock on to the end of the track. And you simply click and you can carry on with what you were doing before. Now the snap the snap to track tool can be helpful. So let's say I want, I don't know, a, a line coming from here to connect to the main line and I want it to join on. So I'll select one track, I'm going to have one track. I'll come across and then as you can see it will snap once you're roughly over it. It will do this and you click and there you go, you've got a junction. So up here you've got some more tools that might be useful. So you've got Save, oh sorry, copy, paste, display, which I'll go over later, delete, measure, undo, redo. These tools here are quite useful when placing track. So the first one is a selected tool, so you can select a bit of track. So let's say I want to select the white track, I'm going to simply wait till there's a yellow line appearing on the white track. I'm going to click, click once, and you can see I can drag it and move around, it can be a bit finicky sometimes. So then once you've got it to where it wants to be, you click again and you can adjust the properties here on the right. And you can edit the properties of that bit selected. So let's say I want that bit to be on the 50 miles an hour instead of 90, I can change it there. You've also got the split tool. So if I want to split some of the tracks, so let's say I don't know, I want it to end here, I can click the split tool and there you go. It will split the track and I can delete this or drag it off. You've also another hint as well as the split tool is if you click and hold and drag it across, it will do it evenly on any track, but not parallel. Well, yeah, parallel to it. Let's say there's two pieces of track, so let's say here and here, and you want to join them together. So, what you do is you click join, or sorry, join, click the track and click the second one and it will join. The way I think about it in order when joining is the thing you do to track you don't want to move on to stay where it is you select that last. So let's say I want to join this track here to this track. I simply click join, click the track I want to move and then click where I want it to go just like that. So as you can see here I've split the track and if I want to rejoin it I simply click this well tool here and a little box should appear above it, once you click that, it will join them together. And there are other uses for world, world tools. 
so let's say I've got a track coming across so let's say I've got a track coming across here there's no crossover but let's say I want if I click this and this it's created gaps in the train to make you know like realistic just delete that and also if you do delete it once then after you've done that you will have to weld join the track back together the next tool is the crossover tool which is if you've got two pieces of track and you want to do a crossover between them you select this tool then you select so click on the track select the track you want and then this little arrow thing and the red bars will appear click where you want to start and then once you've clicked you should see this layout where the track will go they can see there's a point where i can drag it and select how steep or not so steep the track will be and once you find the right place you simply click and it's created a junction so if you want to create multiple crossovers so that's going from this track to this side you just click the box again and it will and it will create another crossover so i'll just run through that again because it is quite well for the steps so you first you click the crossover tool then you select the track you want to do it on with you can adjust the properties here on the right and then you select where you want it to start and then a little icon or a layout or preview will show you where the track will go and once you're happy with it you click again and it will appear if you want to cross over from the other track as well you just click the little box and it will appear again now this the next tool is the gradient tool now I prefer to use this than the gradient tool down here on the left because I can make it a bit more accurate so as you can see a bunch of arrows will appear so you can adjust the height if you want to so I can click one of these arrows oops so I can click one of these arrows and drag it up drag it down and select the track now I think I find quite helpful is at the bottom here it tells you your height so you can see how high you're dragging it up but let's say let's say you don't want the the hill to start till about here for example they simply click and you can add another hour and when i drag it up you can see it starts on the previous hour Okay, lastly, one tool that I kind of skipped over was the offset tool. Now, this is really for later on, but I'll show you what it is anyway. So, if I click the select tool, I can then select, so select the track, drag it. But if I want to use the offset tool, I click on it, and as you can see, you've got these two little arrows showing up. I can just how far I want it to be, so I can say 10 or I want it to be 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. Then let's say I want a piece of track to be here. So we're going to click track concrete clean, which is the track I'm using, and click on the hour and it place the track there. What were you selected? Bear in mind the offset tool will only go as far as where you stop selecting. Once you've done what you wanted to do and you're happy with the track, if you simply press F2, it will save it and select yes. Now, I do recommend saving it quite regularly because, you know, because this game does crash quite a lot on the editor. So, I hope this has helped for the first part. The next episode will be on signalling and signage, or in the UK. And I hope you stick around for that, and that should follow this quite shortly. So if you need any extra help or you want to keep up to date when the next video will come out or want to use on my route, join my Discord, there'll be a link in the description.